Okay, good afternoon, everybody. Um, appreciate you joining me today. Uh, my name is John Vieira, and I'm the Director of Sustainability at Ford. And uh, with gas prices going the way they are, I know everybody's very interested in talking about fuel efficiency. And, and in particular, you know, what is Ford doing from a fuel efficiency standpoint? What kind of products are being offered? And, and really, what can we expect going into the future? And, and I'm here to, to talk a lot about that today. Um, I'll have some you know, introductory comments and, and go over some material, but what I'm really interested in are the questions that you all have. And I know that there's been some questions that have been provided you know, ahead of, the, uh, of, of this actual live blog, which is fantastic. We'll go through those. And I also know that there'll be uh, a time for online questions. So we'll definitely have plenty of time to get to those. But for starters, um, let, let me really start at a very high level. When I, my, my role as Director of Sustainability, when we talk about sustainability, uh, we're really talking about what is it that the company's doing from a long-term strategy standpoint, both on the environmental side and then also on the social side. And when we talk about the environmental side of sustainability, that's all about what are we doing with our products to make them more environmentally friendly, and what are we doing with the manufacturing facilities to make sure they're um, treating the environment the right way as well. On the vehicle side, when we talk about environmental sustainability, the, the key element to that is fuel economy. So I'm going I'm to get back to fuel economy because that's where I'm going to spend most of my time today is discussing that. But let me just kind of flip over to the social side because it is an important piece and I know that uh, a lot of people are interested in you know, Ford being a responsible company and what are we doing. On the social side of sustainability, our, our group really looks at what are the things that we should be doing from a social standpoint um, with our products and our processes. And in particular, we look at things like um, working conditions, making sure we have the right, right working conditions in our facilities throughout the world. And those working conditions and human rights codes, as we call them, include things like making sure the environments are safe, uh, people are being paid a fair wage, uh, their, um, uh, the, the temperature is right, they're working the right number of hours. And yeah, we could push that and do that in our facilities worldwide. Where it really gets interesting, though, is as we look at our supply base, particularly in Asia, as we get into China and India, we want to make sure that our suppliers are also providing those same levels of you know, human rights and working conditions in their facilities. So big effort going on, making sure that that's happening, you know, making a difference in the world from that standpoint. And then the other element, which is, which is kind of neat from a social standpoint, when we look out you know, 30 years from now, 50 years from now, transportation is, is really going to be different. So we want to understand, as we look at personal mobility as it relates to public transportation, how do those interfaces happen, and how do we make sure that we're able to continue to sell our vehicles but do it in a way that doesn't really um, uh, hurt congestion in a lot of these large cities. So we focus a lot on that too. What is the future businesses we want to be in as a company? Now, putting the social side um, you know, off to the side at this point in time, let me go back to the environmental piece so that we can get into to the fuel economy. On the environmental side, from a sustainability strategy standpoint, I mentioned the vehicles and then the facilities that we produce the vehicles. So what are the plants that build these vehicles? And some of the, the strategies that we put in place and the objectives that we have are really setting goals for reducing the amount of energy that we're using in the plants, reducing the amount of water that we're using. Water is becoming a, a, a real significant issue. Um, fresh water availability is very difficult to come by. So we want to minimize the amount of water that we're using in our plants. And also, we want to understand how we can make water more accessible to those communities that we actually have our plants in. Particularly important, again, as you go over to Asia, China, uh, India, where they have a lot of water scarcity. Uh, the other areas that we focus on from a plant standpoint is really reducing the amount of waste we're sending to landfill and those types of elements. So we spent a, a lot of time on that piece. We have a group that focuses really on the manufacturing side and you know, really proud of that. But the one area of sustainability that uh, our group is also responsible for is really understanding and developing the long-term strategies for our products. And when we talk about our products being environmentally friendly, um, you could actually put uh, those, that, that particular um, element in two bins. You have reducing the amount of carbon dioxide that's coming from our tailpipe. And the reason that's important is reducing the amount of carbon dioxide coming from our tailpipe 
has a positive effect, uh, effect in terms of climate stabilization or preventing doing our share in terms of mitigating global warming. Uh, and when we talk about CO carbon dioxide coming from our tailpipe, by improving fuel economy, what you're exactly doing is reducing the amount of carbon dioxide coming from our tailpipe. So that's one of the main reasons why we do focus on fuel economy, because it's not only good for customers, which we'll get into, it's also good for the environment. The other piece from a vehicle standpoint when we talk about environmental sustainability are what are the materials that are going into our vehicles. So what we mean by that is we want to have are the materials that we use, number one, not necessarily just scrape the earth of you know, all the available materials, but we want to really focus on what we call renewable materials. So those are materials from plant-based sources versus petroleum-based sources. So if you think about you know, kind of a typical automotive interior, lots of plastic and plastic pieces and foams that are inside of your vehicle, almost in most in all cases, the the um, the raw material that's used to produce those plastic pieces or that that foam comes from petroleum. So you're using petroleum to produce that. What we have a big effort on is, you know, how do we use renewable materials, so plant-based materials in our products. A good example is the foam that we have in our seats across almost all of our products right now. Instead of using a petroleum-based source, we're now using soy oil from the soy plant to produce that foam. So the good thing is we're reducing our reliance on foreign oil, obviously. But the other piece is when you reuse renewable materials like uh, plant-based materials versus petroleum-based products, they're very compostable. So if those materials ever were to make it into a landfill, very compostable and they break down very easily. So lots of effort with regard to renewable materials and also using recycled content in our material. Uh, so when we think about our vehicles, all of the black components that you might see if you lift up the hood, uh, you know, usually they're the black plastic type parts. Uh, the majority of those are actually made with things like recycled pop bottles. So big focus on taking waste streams from other industries and actually use those in our products. Something that was, was pretty cool that uh, we, we got some recognition for is if you think about the backing of carpeting and the insulation that we put in um, our vehicles and the sound deadening insulation that we put in our vehicles, we actually use the equivalent in our Focus car, the equivalent of uh, two pairs of recycled blue jeans right, as material um, in the backings of our carpeting and in the insulation. So again, just this mindset of how do we take not only our own waste streams and recycle them, but how do we take the, uh, the waste streams of other industries and actually use that material in our products. So I've kind of given you an overview of sustainability, social side, environmental side, have left out the fuel economy piece. So that's really what I want to focus on right now. That's what most of you are here to listen about. What are we doing from a fuel efficiency standpoint? So let me talk first about the strategy for fuel efficiency. So I mentioned the fact uh, earlier that as we improve fuel economy, we reduce the amount of carbon dioxide that's coming from our tailpipe, which reduces the impact on climate change. So we're kind of doing our share. As we talk about our long-term strategy for fuel economy, it's really tied to, if we think about um, doing our share in terms of mitigating climate change, what is going to be the allowable amount of carbon dioxide that we're going to be able to have come from our products two years from now, five years from now, 10 years from now, 50 years from now. We determine those targets and that really lines up for us what kind of fuel economy we are going to need to have to deliver to those targets. And so when we have that kind of as our, our target, our, our, our goal post to shoot for, we've laid that out and what we came up with is something called our blueprint for sustainability. And our blueprint for sustainability just basically says, as we look at the products that come from Ford Motor Company, what are the sizes of the vehicles we need to have to deliver to those future targets? What are the technologies that need to go into those products? Are they going to be running on gasoline, diesel, ethanol, natural gas, electric? What does that mix look like? So that's all part of our strategy. And then we also highlight exactly when we're going to put those products out on the marketplace. Now, when we talk about fuel economy, if we're going to deliver, let's say, the best we can, we set out to basically make a commitment that for every new product that we have coming out, so every new product we have coming out, 
we're going to be best in class or at least tied with best in class in every segment that we serve in. So a segment would be you know, small car versus mid-sized car versus large car, small truck, mid-sized truck, large truck. Uh, small SUV, mid-size SUV, et cetera. Those are all different segments. So Ford's commitment is we want to be leadership in fuel economy in every one of those segments when we come out with a new product. And so number one, not only is that great news from an environmental standpoint, which I'm very interested in, uh, the other piece is naturally, as you all know, particularly with gas prices right now, when, when customers are out looking to buy a product, Typically, they have a size of a vehicle, a type of a vehicle in mind, you know, pickup truck versus a car. And with gas prices the way they are, you know at the top of their list is going to be what, does it, what is the fuel economy of product A versus product B. So we know that if we set a goal of being best in class in fuel economy for every segment that we serve in, from a consideration standpoint, that the Ford vehicles are going to be at the top of the list. Now, when we talk about that strategy, we're actually, you know, a couple of years into that strategy. And, and the good news is that we have made some good product, uh, good progress. Uh, we actually have, Ford actually has 12 vehicles that are, are best in class in fuel economy in their segment. So that's more than any other automaker. So that was the plan. We said we're going to do it. You know, the cool thing is that we are demonstrating that 12 vehicles best in class um, in their segment more than any other automaker. Uh, we have four cars that get more than 40 miles per gallon. We have the Fiesta, the Focus, the Fusion Hybrid, and the Lincoln MKZ Hybrid, so a luxury hybrid as well, all getting over 40 miles per gallon. So we're really proud of you know, what we've been able to deliver so far. Still have more work to do, right? We, we want to get there in every segment that we serve in, but we're on the right path. And I think you know, the reason why a lot of customers are interested in our products is because, especially now with fuel prices, uh, they know that they're going to get some, some great fuel economy. Um, I want to talk a little bit about this great, okay, so we're, we're delivering these vehicles that get this best-in-class fuel economy. Mean, how are we doing? Is it smoke and mirrors? Are you doing some real things that give us that best-in-class fuel economy? Well, there's a, a couple of elements that I want to touch on. First of all, for a lot of our, our gasoline products and diesel vehicles that are out there, we're doing a couple of things. On the gasoline products, we introduced a technology called EcoBoost, and many of you are aware of it. I know that because I saw some of the questions that were coming out of the um, um, some, from some of you right uh, before this blog. Uh, you have a familiarity with uh, EcoBoost. Uh, just the concept, very high level. We're direct injecting, you know, um, the fuel into the cylinder, and we're using turbocharging basically to compress the air that's coming in, and it just gives you more power. And if you were to walk away and say, okay, so that's the technical aspect. I mean, what does it mean in, in more of a layman's term? I would say what it means is that we're able to downsize our engines but give the power of the larger engine. So a good example would be our, an EcoBoost V6 would have the same power and performance of a V8, but since it's a V6, you're actually going to be getting better fuel economy. So, I mean, just people can understand the physicals. I have two less cylinders. I probably will be getting better fuel economy. The cool thing is, is that we've taken that technology of direct injection and um, turbocharging to give the performance of the larger engine with the fuel economy of the smaller engine. And we're, we're really pushing this across all of our product lines to have these EcoBoost versions in our vehicles. Because at the end of the day, you know, there was probably a point, you know, 10 years ago that every time we came up with improvements in terms of uh, performance of the engine, we would put it into more horsepower, more cylinders, more torque, right? We just kept getting more and more and more. Uh, we just feel now that we're at a point, particularly with high fuel economy or high fuel prices, that as we get these improvements in technology like EcoBoost, rather than just plowing it into more horsepower, more cylinders, we said, hey, let's take that technology and those improvements and let's give fantastic fuel economy 
without compromising the power and the performance. So that's the kind of the key concept that we have in our gasoline engines to improve fuel economy is with EcoBoost. Um, you know, up to a 20% uh, fuel economy improvement, depending on if you're going from a V8 to a V6, EcoBoost V6 or V6 to an EcoBoost uh, uh, inline four-cylinder engine. You can get up to a 20% fuel economy improvement. So that's one of the key enablers right for our fuel economy story but we have a lot of other enablers as well because when you, when you think about improving the fuel economy of a vehicle it's not just in the engine so we're doing things like and i think everybody can relate to this the aerodynamics right it doesn't matter if you're if it's a car or a bicycle or a swimmer right in the olympics where they're wearing these one-piece suits right if in fact you could reduce the drag right of a an object moving forward you're going to use less energy right so using less energy for us means better fuel economy so we spend a lot of time in the wind tunnel on aerodynamic improvements if it's optimizing mirror shapes if it's optimizing the grill and the headlights and making sure everything is as flush as possible a big focus on that and we're getting some improvement there some of the other areas that we're really seeing some big time improvements are uh, we're electrifying things like your steering. So we have something called electric power assisted steering. So rather than using a typical belt driven system to assist with your steering, if we, if we make it electric, less drag on the engine, better fuel economy. Uh, that's another technique that we're using. We also have technology like uh, transmissions are going to higher speed. So we have six speed transmissions as opposed to five speed and four speed transmissions better fuel economy associated with that. So you're going to see that in our vehicles. And then in the near future, we have this technology called stop-start technology. Um, we see it all, we, we have this technology actually in Europe quite a bit right now. And basically what it is is you come up to a stop sign, stop light, your, your engine tech virtually shuts off. I mean, it shuts off. And then the minute you hit your accelerator pedal to, to move off the line because the light turned green or you're ready to move forward from the stop sign, boom the engine kicks back in and you're moving forward. It's really imperceptible, but it does give a, a very good fuel economy boost. So that's another element. And then the, the, the final element that I wanna talk about on the, from an overall vehicle standpoint is weight reduction. So we're really looking at taking out significant weight from our vehicle. And people will ask me, you know, well, what's better, you know, should we be thinking about, should Ford be thinking about gasoline vehicles in the future, electric vehicles in the future, diesel vehicles, vehicles that run on hydrogen? You probably need to work on all of those, and I'm going to talk about all those in a second. But regardless of the type of, I'm going to call it propulsion system where we put in the vehicle, gasoline or electric or hydrogen, the one key common denominator is weight. So if you take weight out of the vehicle, going to take less energy to move it. Heck, if you run out of gas and you got to push your car to the gas station, that vehicle weighs less, it's going to take you less energy to push it. So one of the key factors that we have in all of our products is really taking out weight, reducing that weight, and that gives us the ability to use less energy. And in the case of a gasoline engine, it uses less fuel. So big factor in terms of the fuel economy. So it's all those bits and pieces that really allow us to get to this, this, this best-in-class fuel economy, that, um, that commitment that we made. So we're very happy about that. Um, I want to now move from kind of the pure gasoline. And uh, you, many of you have seen a lot of announcements from us with regard to our electrification strategy. So when we talk about our electrification strategy, our electrification strategy is moving from, you could call the bookends, right, from a pure gasoline engine to a pure battery electric vehicle that doesn't have any engine at all. And when we talk about our electric vehicle portfolio, we're going to think about it in three different pieces. You have your traditional hybrids, right? So we have an escape hybrid out there today. There's a fusion hybrid out there today. There's no plug anywhere, right? You're just basically, you know, using the engine, but you're trying to use the battery as much as possible to drive the vehicle. And the more you use the battery, the better your fuel economy. Right? And if the battery gets low, it gets charged two ways. If you're applying the brakes, we have something called regenerative braking that actually charges the battery. If you're not braking enough, the engine will actually help charge the battery. But it's, the hybrid concept is to optimize using the battery as much as possible um, without using the engine. That's one version of our electrified vehicles. The other version which we're coming out with, uh, we announced the C-Max Energy. 
and that vehicle is a plug-in vehicle. So think about a hybrid. You got a plug in it now, right? So you can plug that battery in your wall at night. You could charge that battery. And in many cases, you could go, you know, 20, 30, 40 miles. It all depends on the different vehicles. But you could go a certain distance just on the electric portion of that vehicle. And then the vehicle runs just like a hybrid, right? You don't have to go and plug it back in again. As long as you have gas, your engine kicks in and it runs just like a hybrid. So that's our plug in version. We announced the C Max. Uh, coming out in uh, 2012. And then uh, we have a pure battery electric version. So that version is a vehicle, there's no engine, right? So unlike the hybrid and the plug-in hybrid that have these engines kind of as backup, the battery electric vehicle has no engine, right? That's just pure battery. You plug it in to get the juice, you run a certain distance, 80 to 100 miles, and then once after you get done with that 80 to 100 miles, you gotta find a plug, right? And plug that sucker back in. So what we've announced as a company, we're going to be introducing five electrified vehicles between now in 2012 in North America and now in 2013 in Europe. So the, the vehicles that we already have out there, the vehicles that we already have out, the vehicle we already have out there, the battery electric uh, Transit Connect. So this is a small commercial van that you might see running around maybe in New York City and in, in other cities. It's, it's, it's becoming more popular. Small commercial van, pure battery electric, came out with that last year. The end of this year, beginning of next year, we're going to have our battery electric focus. Very excited about that. That's going to be coming out, um, uh, like I said, end of the next, this year, beginning of next year. And then, you know, soon after that, we'll have this plug-in um, C-MAX energy vehicle uh, that, that we'll be coming out with. So from a Ford perspective, when we talk about electrifying our vehicles, it's hybrids, plug-ins, battery electrics, unlike our competition that might just have only a plug-in or only a battery electric, we have the full gamut of, of electrified vehicles. And the reason for that is at Ford, we like to think about you know, we want to appeal to everybody, right, to the masses. And every, every person, all our customers have different wants and different needs for the type of vehicle that they drive. So for a customer that only drives, you know, no more than 30, 40 miles a day and occasionally a little bit more, maybe a battery electric vehicle makes sense to them. But for the person that says, hey, you know, six days a week, I'm only driving 30 to 40 miles a day, but man, you know, one day out of that week, I do need to go 200 miles and I, because I want to go up to my cottage or down to the lake or go visit a relative and I don't want to have to worry about plugging in in between. Well, then a plug-in vehicle makes sense for them. So uh, we really want to make sure that our portfolio really includes choices for customers. There's not one right answer. The one right answer is the, the, answer, the, the type of vehicle you need as a customer. We're not going to force you into a particular vehicle that might have certain limitations for you. We want to give that, that broad range. So that's our electrified portfolio. Uh, the other cool thing about our electrified portfolio, unlike our competitors that might have a, a unique vehicle for their electrified uh, version, uh, as I talk about, the Focus battery electric vehicle is a vehicle that actually um, is like our, our gasoline Focus in that, you know, it's going to look very similar. The real cool thing is that it comes off the same line as the, the, the uh, gasoline Focus. So when you think about that, people ask, well, what, you know, what's your projection for the battery electric Focus? You know, how many are you going to, how many are you going to need to protect for to sell? I said, you know, I have a lot of flexibility in my plant because I'm building gasoline and battery electric focuses down the same line. Electric vehicles take off, boom, I just kind of mix manage, produce more electric vehicles. If gasoline takes off or electric vehicles don't take off, I could produce more gasoline. So our concept is using what we call this global platform. So a lot of different vehicles come off the Focus platform. The Transit Connect is actually going to come off the Focus platform. We have our C-Max that comes off the Focus platform. By this Focus platform globally sells 2 million vehicles. So our concept on electric vehicles is we want to make them affordable as possible. And our thinking is if we put our electrified products on a platform that is a high volume platform, I could really drive down the cost and make that particular electric vehicle as affordable as possible. 
So that's kind of in, in a nutshell, you know, where we're going from a fuel economy standpoint, all the different pieces from gasoline through the electric vehicles. I'm glancing over at the clock here. I want to stop now and let's uh, take some questions.